indeed. It'll be a lot better than the last time. I hope so. I feel like I need to start it with like some. Who's that? Uh, not Chuck Norris. Who's the other kung fu guy? Bruce, Bruce Lee. Lee. I feel like this is a very oh, Bruce Lee move. Oh, again. <laughs> <laughs> going into this. Here we go. Is a Bruce something? <laughs> again. That's Come two on. weeks in a row. Dude, I got this. Hold on. I, how did I even do this? Dude, you can't do that two weeks in a row. I feel like, I don't know. This is amazing. Got to move your beverage. All right. That may have been better than anything we've had so far. Here we go. <laughs> Are you trying to do I'm this? I'm really not. That's the sad part. People play this game, dude. What in the? W- <laughs> you realize that I have not broken once yet. Don't keep that on film. <laughs> oh, hold on. <laughs> <laughs> keep backing it up there, Paul. There hey, we go. Hey. there we go. Ball. Jeez, we'll get better at this. At some Goodness point. gracious. Huh. What are we talking about here today? We're talking about. Yeah, go ahead and hit the ball. Okay. <laughs> All right, so people don't tune out here because you're in my corner at my mic trying to hit the ball. Oh, it looks like you're solid. And I did And you got ball. two in. And I got two in. That's fantastic. Well, here we are, episode three of the Paul Cast, and we are back with uh, another amazing round of pool between my producer, uh, film producer that is, and co-host Red Bacanacalus, and um, that's my government. Name. That's his government name, and uh, <clears throat> we decided one of the things we were talking about. We uh, alluded to it a little bit last week was, was that? <laughs> uh, influences that we've had on oh, us, yes. both in film and yes. in music and that sort of thing, yes. and uh, which kind of brought us into like a new stage of like. The world has changed a lot, Very as we know, so. in so many different ways. <laughs> but one of those things is in influences yeah. are are still there, but now we have influencers right. that are our influence. And well, these are these are what are what is explain what an influence is real quick influencer is yeah. real quick in case there's a couple people that well, may not know actually, what that is. I think the way to define it is kind of by <clears throat> defining both really, which is to say that an influence is something that you pick up organically and sort of passively. Like an influence is something that you happen upon and you find in your life and you accept it to be something that you find really interesting and cool. Whereas an influencer is kind of an active like advertisement for a specific lifestyle or type of activity that you might find yourself being in. Right, like Ryan, the, right. the kid, the toy kid dude. Right, loves toy toys. Kid dude. Toy yes. kid dude. Gets paid to open toys. Isn't and that the best job I ever? believe he was the number one uh, paid YouTuber for the last two years, if I'm not mistaken. I don't do their analytics, well, obviously, so I don't know for sure. Yeah. But I read that somewhere that it was like in the 20 million. Uh, people love to watch people oh open my gosh. stuff. Oh. And then on top of that, can you imagine like how many kids kids are just like i want that well, toy but i'm gonna check this out I first thought, so like, well, maybe I what that. happens if i start opening up toys and buying them People, then it just got creepy so well, I yeah you, you can put but, on a list if that's <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> but no for my kids like we're in walmart and they literally want to buy the ryan cereal this kid has his own cereal it, and you know when i was growing up which wasn't that long ago right yeah um we had wheaties boxes and like Sports stars, would, yeah. Ago? Sports stars would be on there, and like that, they would like have to hope that Wheaties wanted to pick them, kind of like the Madden cover of, you know, the, right. the John Madden video game. So it was a big deal. Good. Yeah. So, but now you've got these kids on YouTube that don't need any big Wheaties company no. or Pepsi or no. or Madden games or whatever. Um, to, they're 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 becoming their own rock stars yeah. just by being influencers um, and getting their own cereal. They don't totally. they, instead of being on Wheaties, they are Wheaties. You well, know, and it's cool too because it's really just like passions a lot of the time that like kind of manifest and then make someone into that. Because like a lot of these people, like 
there's a bunch of music influencers too, even. Um, and a lot of those people, I feel like they stumble into it because they go, you know, like, oh, I'm going to write a song today. And then they write that song. A couple people like it. And then they're like, okay, I'm going to keep writing. Songs yeah. And, stuff. And, and then all of a sudden now we have sponsorships and companies and all this stuff backing that person, you know? And, and, and I've got so some buddies. Awesome. I won't, I won't mention which bands they are. Um, but they, do subscribe to influ- music influencers and people who will put their playlists on their social media mm-hmm. and go, hey, y'all, you know, this is uh, Kim Kardashian. And sure. you need she to. She says, hey, y'all. This, yeah, she does it all the time, actually. You know, um, you can tell I've met her a lot and we've oh, yeah. out a bunch. So many times. So when Kim says, hey, you y'all. And Chris, super close. Who's Chris? The mom. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> is that the one that. Switched? No. no, no, that's that was the dad that became a mom. Yeah, I'm very confused. Anyway, back to <laughs> I don't think we can keep back, any of that in. Keep, sure, we can. I'm I love all whatever you do. Anyway, um, I just didn't know who was who. Who did what? But that yes, that yes. was my point. I don't know who did what. Anyway, yeah. hey, um, <laughs> uh, basically they'll put they'll put a playlist out, Chris right. or whoever it is. Yeah. We'll we'll say hey you need to listen hey y'all you need to listen hey, to this song by so and so and the thing is they've got gazillions of followers on yes. everything so all of a sudden a couple of buddies of mine who have been on have paid to paid these influencers a little mm-hmm. bit of money not right. a ton a little bit to um, put them on their playlist uh-huh. all of a sudden they've got a hundred thousand people checking out their song without wow. having a record deal. On Spotify, all of a sudden they've got you know two hundred thousand plays yeah. because of an influencer right. um, doing doing some some groundwork for them. So the reason that I wanted to talk about that a little bit is is my shot or yours? I, th- I don't I think know. it's my shot, but anyway, shot. well, I want to talk about that is because <laughs> growing up for me. This was not a thing for right. you. I don't even think it was a thing. It's no, a fairly new yeah, thing, that, that wasn't you know. A thing for um, me and mm. so I grew up with, or we grew up with, in, in film and in and in yeah. and in TV and, I and music. To the library to find my influence. Uh, yeah, yeah. Right. <laughs> so, but we depended on either our parents. Yes. Y'all, this is Hi, Duchess. Kitty. We're gonna take a this quick is my break. Cat this is and Duchess. and she helps me. So we she play challenge pool. And what you can see what she's doing right now. This is the I'm challenge. stripes. He's solid. And she'll move the balls around. Right. And we have to play wherever Duchess moves the balls. Yeah. And she's not afraid of us hitting them around or anything. No. It's fantastic. No, it actually well improves it. our <laughs> game. Which doesn't well, it take much to do. Your game. <laughs> it improves my game. <laughs> I should have had her break for me. Probably. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So, you know, when we had these influences, it was usually our family that influenced us. Yeah. The radio yeah. influenced us. Um, things that were maybe, like, I remember, you know, uh, song placements in a TV show. Oh, totally. You know, whether it's uh, Dancing with the Stars or, right. or even earlier on, like, Grey's Anatomy. People, yeah. like, loved getting into all the music that was in oh, with totally. all that sort of stuff. <laughs> I remember so, doing that, too. Yeah. Smallville was, like, one that I yeah, super totally. got into for the music. So, <laughs> the there were other it was like genres within genres but there weren't specific 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 (laughs) specific people going hey y'all you need to listen to this song telling you what to listen to you would pick it up if it was in a show it's more organic Uh, yeah and and you go like i i can't you know, tell you how many times my wife would be we were watching Dance with the Stars or whatever, uh-huh. and she's like, "Oh, I gotta get that song." She stops even watching the show of Dancing right. with the Stars, and like, she's like paying app, uh, Apple, yeah. you know, ninety nine cents to download that song. So the influences usually came through at least a musical type thing or a film type thing or right. a TV show type thing yeah. that would get you into stuff. Or to take it even further back with family, I'm five years old. What do I have? I've got a brother that's 10 years older than me, right. a sister that's 12 years older than me. Yeah. And then my parents, I was the oops child. If you listen to episode two, you would you find, know. <laughs> you would know that I was, you know, largely unexpected, you know, you still are. and yeah, I know <laughs> my brother still calls me the milkman's kid, but anyway, um, no, he but, calls uh, me child. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> well, I don't know about that, but anyway, um, so with that, 
you know, I grew up on the influences of others. My influencers mm. were my family. Right. Primarily. Yeah. And my friends in radio. Yeah. And I that's say friends for sure. Yeah. Oh, that's most a, definitely. Your peers are like your You don't main forget influences. your first, you know, mm. album that you bought or downloaded yeah. or whatever the case may be. And mm. largely that had to do a lot with your Let's peer do groups. That real quick. You know? I feel like that would be good for for the listeners. I What's like that? What our first albums? You go first. Were. I gotta hit this. Okay. Go ahead. Well, my my first one was the Phantom of the Opera soundtrack. Really? It was. It was when the movie had just come out, and I was obsessed with it. And I <laughs> had like four weeks worth of homework to do because we had gone on vacation. And when I got back, I did all my homework. So my mom took me at like midnight to Walmart to buy that soundtrack, and I fell asleep to it. It was great. Does it have to be purchased? That one your did. first no, I mean your first album. Oh no, because okay. <laughs> I, mean, I, I obtained mine out of the store completely somehow, different but... way. <laughs> <laughs> so I still, you know, we had music stores at the mall. Yes, there was a thing called a music store at one point. Did you did you ever have music stores growing up? Music stores at the mall. Yeah, there was and a they great ha- place in They had these listening stations, right? Oh, yeah. And you could actually listen to stuff before you, you know, decided to purchase it or whatever. Um, and, I'm, gosh, I'm trying to think of what my very first <laughs> purchased album would have been. Yeah. I was a little off the beaten path with what those influences were because my sister and brother I think were that older. Runs in the family. Yeah. It does, yeah. <laughs> and I, I definitely remember um, that my brother, I, my brother was an athlete, and I wanted right. to be an athlete like him. And um, clearly, that worked out. Um, <laughs> but, um, especially my pool game reflex. Yes. Yeah, it's probably this probably is about my other sport. This is your yeah. athletic. So um, <laughs> quality. <laughs> I did all right. Just I'm sure it, in baseball and football. Those, there you go. those were things those I was respectable good. Respectable all American. Respectable all American sports. And good all American sports. But um, very nice, very nice. Yeah, I missed that one. Help me, Duchess. Help me. <laughs> so th- I would say. I definitely remember he had he would walk out to We Are the Champions by Queen um in all of his uh sporting events, right. football, mm-hmm. wrestling, whatever he did. So uh, again, my my introduction to Queen was not oh, they're the greatest rock band ever, ever. or Freddie Mercury best <laughs> frontman ever, best yeah. singer ever, all that sort of stuff which I still hold you know them in high regard yeah. you know for all of that but it, it was an influence because my brother walked out to it on right. the wrestling mat or, uh, or the football team walked out to it to yeah. we are the champions I, I, and this the coolest thing about being a little kid is that genres and time frames and decades don't mean a thing yeah and so all i knew is that is the coolest song i've ever heard right between Brian May's guitar playing on yeah. it and between Which Freddie Mercury singing. Tone. Oh, my gosh. Like. So, <laughs> yeah, I mean, and one of the most iconic tones, this is going to get a little geeky for just a second, but, like, literally all of the new amp modeling things yeah. that have been out in the last 10 years or, and, and continue to, to come out with that are not real amps, they're simulated right. guitar amplifiers. Yeah. Every single one of them has a Brian May preset. It's like, you know you're fantastic. a legend <laughs> when your tone is a preset for... Well, and how crazy you know. is it that he built the guitar with his dad? Built the too. guitar, you know what So I mean? it's like he literally manufactured yeah. his tone And he blew existence. up more Vox amps than Vox even blew up, you yeah. know, just, just so... <laughs> but anyway, uh, so that's how I got introduced to that. And I remember that that album so was, that was like the first, that was like on my record. bucket list albums. Like I have to own. Yeah. We are the champions. Didn't really know <laughs> what queen was. Didn't know anything about them as a band. Right. It was just, I, I just knew that I that. Had, had a really cool album cover and yeah. I had to have that song. Totally. And so that song, I mean, it's kind of been a theme 
for anything in life yeah. for me from a very early age. And, uh, but, but then some, some other ones that I had to get into right away. As soon as he brought home th- the thriller album. Oh dude. I was like, I got on that one. Yeah. That, that was like the first artist that oh, I like fell in love with. The like Michael, Michael Jackson, Jackson stuff was unbelievable. Yeah. I'll tell you what was so cool. My brother was really into Leonard Skinner too. Of course he growing was. up. And everything about and him says Leonard Skinner. A C D C and Aerosmith and, yeah. and and all of those seventies, eighties, you know, bands and stuff. And um of course I didn't know what any of that was, just heard him playing it. Right. But to have to see him go from you know this hard rocking stuff, yeah. testosterone fueled <clears throat> music. To when the Thriller album came out, yeah. All of a sudden, that was like completely different sound totally. from anything that he had done. And then all of a sudden, the Commodores albums and Commodores and are great. <laughs> Billy Ocean and and yes. and all of these like eighties R and B artists yeah. started to be. It really like just turned heavily on him. So you left and, out and the best one though. Who's that? Luther Vandross. Oh, Luther Vandross. That was more. That was yeah. Oh, oh, oh yeah. Luther. Luther. <laughs> He's the best. <laughs> oh yeah. Here and now. Yeah. You know? <laughs> I promise to love faithfully. <laughs> Yeah, he's awesome. Never too much. Him and Aaron Neville, you know. Oh, Aaron Neville. Yeah. Good now, now you're talking. Then, then I was more the Boys to Men era. Like okay. that was I love my Boys era to Men. of R and B music. Him and End of um, the Road is like one of the best singles ever. So, have you heard? Uh, talk about what one of the things that I love about influences is when a modern day artist gets mm-hmm. together with an older influence and yeah. they do like, there's always crossroads shows and right. those sorts of things happen. But I was looking for some, some other music to do, like for some of the next stuff yeah. that we're going to be doing. And I ran across a song. I just, I don't know how I missed it, but I didn't know that Charlie Puth actually did an all acapella song with boys to men. Whoa! And I'm la- I'm laying one on you here in the podcast. So I really That's hope awesome. that people have paid attention at you know roughly 18 minutes into this. Yeah. But um, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do the song, and I'm gonna okay. do it all by myself. And I'm going yeah, to I do want no part of this. Yeah, you're please. not gonna be involved. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it won't be your traditional video like we might you know do like for Castle on the Hill right. or something like that. But, but here's some music. But you know one of the things May that I recommend stepping back a tiny bit. That mic is a little hot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I get a little excited, too, and sometimes I I blow things up. That's all right. (laughs) Yeah! You want me to do what? All right. Yeah, no, sorry. Just blew up your whole thing right there. That was just an hour's worth of work. That's me being obnoxious, and that's, you know. Musicians have this habit of basically going, oh, you want to tell me what to do on my stage? All right, here you go. No, I'm just kidding. I wouldn't do that to you. I would never just yell in the microphone when I'm not supposed. Now you guys are seeing the fun side of what we did, which is but me editing more. Him editing more. <laughs> but um, so here's how I'm going to do this song. Um, basically, every time that Boys to Men tracks something and Charlie Puth tracking with them, mm-hmm. it's all on an individual track anyway, right. individual mics anyway. So I'm going to do all the parts. Please. And be my uh, one of the things that I got to do growing up in high school. Shall I be seated? Would you like to serenade me? No, no not right now. I didn't say I was going to do it right now. There. But <laughs> um, one of my favorite teachers ever, uh, Tony Aversano, was our. Oh, I thought you were going to do it right now. You said that's what you thought. Bomb I was going to drop the, the bomb of, on you right here. No, 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 not in the podcast. But um, <laughs> I just heard the song today, so I'm not quite prepared. Oh, okay. Hold on. That me, makes me, sense. Me, me, me. Okay, <laughs> um, and, uh, but uh, Tony was our uh, jazz choir okay. teacher, and we learned all those chords right as Boys to Men was like coming out with Cooley High Harmony and all that sort of stuff. And so I was obsessed because I was getting it in school. I was getting it after school and, and it was just awesome stuff to hear. And so when, and I'm a big Charlie Puth fan. And so with him doing his stuff, coming together with them and the fact that he hung with them 
uh, it's in, pretty impressive. in their acapella style of doing things because yeah. like they own that. They're you know? so good. <laughs> uh, them and Take Six were probably yeah. the and and this Elite. I've never met you, but if I ever get to meet you, Brian McKnight, you <laughs> are my favorite singer ever, <laughs> any genre, <laughs> that, all time. That's so funny. Any I can style. See that yeah, like that makes so much sense now that you say that. Yeah. Um. And uh, so yeah, that's that's one of those. Uh, deep questions if somebody was, ever wants to yeah. and we're talking about influences we are, today yeah. so it's cool that we kind of ended up there yeah. in a progression because i was going to talk about him and vince gill and some other people that okay. are that are that are some influences all right, all right. Of me. <laughs> and and not, i don't know too many people that would say who are your two biggest you know uh commercial music vocal influences yeah. that would say oh brian mcknight and vince gill you know um only you so i'm kind of <laughs> whacked out that way but uh i love country and i love r&b and I, I love both of them but um uh I, i've probably studied every single note that brian mcknight has ever sung and i've tried to sing every note that brian mcknight has ever sung and how is that working and i've failed you? miserably okay, on well. almost every note that brian <laughs> mcknight has ever sung but, sometimes it just is but, like um, that you just have to do it i'm going to take that a uh, little curve we can we can come so anyway Long look story look forward to that yeah i don't know how we're going to cut this video so start thinking about like yeah. what that idea would be for maybe it's an in studio video maybe it's not may, i don't know what it is I don't perform these. No, but how you're gonna? Re you you, no, you write all the scripts. I'm going you record to record it, all. it. I just show up. You tell me what to do. <sighs> la 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 la. That's all. I, that's my job. That's fair. So anyway, all right. Um, all right. I got some. So, I got some work to do. I you got, got some work some good to do. Stuff coming. All right then. All right then. Um, whose shot is it? I feel like it's time for You've been one of us to the stick for. Is it my? I'll take a now. shot. I think. I think it's your all turn. Right, here we go. Speaking of taking a shot, I'd like to pause the, for this moment. <laughs> We'd like to thank today's sponsor. Today's broadcast has been sponsored to you by Cooper's Bourbon. All right. It is fantastic. And Grunt Style. If you all haven't gotten your Grunt Style hat yet, you need to go out and get that. And if you're a guitar player, I hope you got Wampler pedals on your board. I'm just they saying. They are the best. Is that enough shameless plugs? No. Oh, okay, we no, can do I more think later. No, just a little bit more. Yeah. That didn't go the way I planned. No, thank you for hitting. Oh, the balls, but look, though. Duchess is back. Come on, girl, put that eight ball in. Cause it, oh no, that would be on me, wouldn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's your turn. Ooh, don't, it would you be. picked the wrong one. All right, all right, all right go hit real <laughs> quick so she can mess with your balls. What? Uh, anyway, <laughs> all right. So we left off at Brian McKnight. Um, wow, that's awesome. Um, who was the guy that I'm trying to remember his name right now? He's your I influence. loved his singing too. I don't know why this this was one that just popped in my brain real quick. Um, Aladdin, like the not the movie. Yeah, one. Robin Williams is one of the best. Peebo Bryson. Peebo Bryson. <laughs> that's who I'm thinking of too. God, I love that dude's voice. I don't know why that, that's ADD that's moment, but he just popped. Cool. I love that guy's voice. <laughs> that's um, awesome. These are not good shots at all. No. But um, we're really bad at pool. this. Is really bad today. We're really bad. Like worse than usual. There you go. Don't you put that one in, Duchess? Do it. Don't you do it. Do it. <laughs> you put all the striped ones in the hole. Come here. <laughs> um. So I mentioned Vince Gill. Um, Vince Gill is <laughs> probably for me. Easily top five influences on me musically, um, if not, if not right at the top. Um, Vince, pretty much, and, and not just because he's talented and all of the stuff that he's done, but the thing about Vince is Vince. Um, a lot of my of what I do mirrors what what Vince has always done. And basically he has, he has, he's a guitar player, right? A, an amazing guitar player yeah. actually. And has been featured on, you know, Eric Clapton's crossroads yeah. uh, tour down in Texas a ton of time. He's an Opry player and, and, and that sort of stuff too. Oh, no, he's fantastic. But, <laughs> but Vince 
is I'm from Northern Virginia, which is really the South still, I guess, yeah. if you consider you know, uh, looking at the old school maps or whatever. Vince is from New York, so not your typical South guy. No. But a guitar player, great singer, but his harmonies. He always picks out music that has great harmonies. And I've had a career in both being a solo artist, but also being a background singer and guitar player at the same time. So I, I've just, we've mirrored a lot of the same things that we've had to do. Um, and I just have an, a, such an appreciation. He's a tone snob on guitar, which yeah. I love. <laughs> and he's a... Every real he, guitar player is, I think. Yeah, and, <laughs> and, and he's a fantastic guitar player, and but he, he really just cares how things sound. Yeah. He loves bass. Yeah. guitar and i play Just bass as so well important. and and um I, I you know for as a from the singer side of things mm -hmm. I, i've always loved and he was one of the few people that i was able to agree with on that said you know you can have all the instruments in the band right. but if your bass is not great you don't have anything to base yeah. your foundation and your vocals off of and it's so true it is and yeah. um so he really listens to the entire orchestration of his of his band. He's involved with the music that he's in. He yeah. writes the music. Um, he's probably the most of all of the influences for me. Probably one of my most comprehensive influences. Right. And he also has had the ability to uh, stand the test of time and and both, you know, do old school country. Right. But do modern collaborations right. with a lot of different people and stuff. And that speaks to me a lot. Yeah. So that's a big influence as well. Um, and, and, it, and it's just fun. What, when you're doing film and things and TV yeah. and all of that, what are a, what are some of your influences? And, but more importantly, like what, what does someone have to do to catch your attention to, to be an influence on you? <laughs> well, okay. Um, I mean, my influences for movies are broad and wide and tall. Um, <laughs> Stanley Kubrick. Kind of like this table that I can't seem yeah, to find a shot of. Fair on. enough. Stanley Kubrick is probably the main massive influence. I'm also a huge fan of David Lynch and David Fincher. Um, people like John Sturges. People like... Um, Man, uh, there's just so many. Like, <laughs> that's the thing. Once you get into, I mean, David Lean is is incredible. Who directed Lawrence of Arabia? Like his transitions alone are just like insanity. Like to think that someone back then had the wherewithal, cinematically and storytelling wise, to cut meaningfully between all of this stuff and tell. An almost four hour long narrative. I mean that's that's really a long impressive. One. Yeah. So I think for me, really what what you have to do to qualify as an influence is is do something that is personal and also exceptional. So what I love about what you just said there is, you know, I'm probably ten years older than you, right? Something like that. So we, yeah. we grew up in a, a slightly different time and and all of that, but um Basically, what's so cool is I love to hear you reference modern day filmmakers and past past day filmmakers. <laughs> past daytime. Past daytime. <laughs> um, and I stumbled on. I wasn't even going to really talk about the Charlie Puth uh, Boys right. to Men collab today. That wasn't anything I really mentioned. But I think that's one of the great things of of arts is that when it's really good, yeah, it it all of a sudden all the things that we get caught up in of 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 the times and the, the all this other sort of stuff just goes out the window and real art when it yeah. matches together can put young and old it can put new and old well actually and, you know, i think together this is this is the intro into a much broader conversation that i've had before um, but I'll just give you a brief summary of that conversation because I think you'll you'll like the antithesis of it. And antithesis. What's that? The point of the I'm argument. Just okay. I just to hear you say All right. <laughs> <laughs> so basically, me and a buddy um, were debating what 
the meaning of art is, which is a huge topic, right? So me and him and... What is the meaning of life? Yes, basically. <laughs> so me and him and his wife are, you know, having a couple of drinks, sitting in their living room, like full-on heated debate about what the meaning of art is. And the only conclusion that we could come to was that art was not defined by the medium or the way that it was done or the skill level or time period or quality. None of that was the point. The whole point was that if you could at any given time, from the beginning of time till the end of time, look at it or hear it and appreciate it, then that is what qualifies it as Qualifies as it as art, as art yeah. yeah. It has to be timeless and something that can be appreciated by someone else. And I think with music and film, it can cover different things. Um, so, ironically, I think in what you said, if someone was to look at a Will Ferrell movie, for example, not art, not, <laughs> not art on, upon first observation. However, would you say that the Will Ferrell movies stand the test of time? I would say that Van Gogh is more timeless than Will Ferrell. Well, he, in the, yeah. well, in the way but, that so you mention could, a film that came out in the last two years well, okay. that anyone remembers versus a Will Ferrell movie that people remember have already remembered for ten years. Well, I think there is a decaying spectrum of quality with American cinema over the past <laughs> ten to twenty years. So you're telling me I can't still love Talladega Nights in ten years? No, from I'm. Now. You can. What I'm saying is that if an alien like like Talladega Nights, <laughs> no, but if an Alien like three thousand. I wish everyone could see how the camera work was gonna have to work on this. Literally, they can. Around, oh, awesome! <laughs> I'm going around the mic behind the chair. This still isn't gonna work. This is not working. Yeah. All right. Would keep, you keep going? Sorry, okay. aliens. We were talking so, about aliens. if an a better shark. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> if an alien was to come down from outer space three thousand years from now, God, and they were to. Suck. Yes, you do. <laughs> and they were to be like archaeologists, right? These are alien archaeologists. They want to find out what lived here on planet Earth. You know what they... I did not see us talking about aliens today. But okay, but here we go. This is where it comes back to art. If they were to pick up a DVD of Talladega Nights or a painting by Van Gogh, right. which one do you think they would be able to well, they intelligibly would look more understand? Like the one, they would look more like the people in the Van Gogh than well, the Talladega that's not Nights. The point. Because they would, they would the associate point, more with the The Van point Gogh. is the Talladega Nights is something that you can only find humorous because... If you're from Alabama. No, because it's in English. And if you understand okay, the enough. language, then you get it. Whereas the Van Gogh, I, you don't have to have language for it. Whereas a pretty little film, infant baby Jesus, <laughs> Ricky Bobby, I understand that very well. Yes, you do. It makes a lot of sense. An alien it speaks would not. to me. It's very artistic. So, to my point though, if you have a very pretty piece of cinema, an alien such could, as Talladega Nights, okay, an alien could enjoy it and look at it in a visual way. And still be stimulated the same way from a painting. I'm stimulated every time I watch him go around the track, and that car flips, and then they do. Okay, you know what, you know what they do? This is not the movie. Talk to, show to me. The what is it? Shake and bake. Shake and bake. Oh yeah, shake and bake's artful. Why? Why do I ever try and have these highbrow moments? Well, see. So, Clearly, you can tell Will Ferrell and Talladega Nights was an influence on my cinematic, uh, my uh, <laughs> this is Paul's taste. My in high film quality, right my taste in films is fantastic. We talked about how I had an opera degree last week. Now we're finding yes. out that Talladega Nights is probably top five. Along, of course, while we're yeah, talking about some other favorite movies, honestly, for me, <laughs> do you, would you like to know the greatest movie of all time? In your opinion, yes. Oh, I actually, I'd like you to guess it while I hit this shot in. Real. Okay. What do you think it is? I'm going to guess something more from your, like, childhood era. Nope. No? Okay. Okay, maybe it's like a... I gave you that. Maybe it's like a college that. influence. Maybe it's like a... It, this, is a this is a film that... It, it gives me something it, to You work could with. be three years old or 300 years old, and it would still be the greatest movie you've ever seen. I think you're going to say Frozen. Or something like that. No, that's terrible. It is not an animated. Oh, okay. No, I'm frozen. I, I thought you were going to give a me a sarcastic guess. That's what I meant. answer. No, this is not a sarcastic okay. answer. Literally, greatest film ever. 
Maybe from a male perspective, but greatest film ever. Mm, that's male, a clue. Male perspective. I'll give you some clues. I'll give you okay. how many clues you want. Give me three. I, I should be able to get it from okay. three. I three feel clues. Like. Greatest film of all time for any male that's ever lived. Okay. No, regardless of age. Okay. Three to three hundred. Uh man, I could give you one clue, but it really would give it away. I think you might have given it away with that last one. All right, one. go ahead. No, let's, but see, I want, let's, I, see, let's see what you got off I of one clue. One more. No, get a guess off of one clue. Okay. This is just a guess. Yeah. Family Vacation, National Lampoon. No. Okay. You have seriously misjudged me and my character of who I am. I don't think so. I told you <laughs> that the first song that I ever purchased was We Are the Champions. Oh, so it's a gay film is what you <laughs> <laughs> It's definitely not where I was going. But if I was, that would be okay. Yes. As Jerry Seinfeld said, there's nothing wrong with that. That's, yeah. yeah it was loosely kind of what he I said. Think he oh, yeah, said many things. Like anyway, that. no. Um, um, <laughs> greatest film ever for a male. Yes, we've covered that one. Ages 3 to 300. 3 to 300. And it's not the 300. It's not 300. Yeah, in case you were wondering yeah. that. Um, it's not far from it, though, okay. in concept. All right. So war esque, and okay. it also could be very related to why I felt like a superhero in Castle on the Hill video that Is we it shot. Robin Hood, I mean, <laughs> not not Robin Hood, but it's okay. a it's a cousin of Robin Hood. Okay, so oh, wait, but you said it's not from your childhood. I was gonna guess not like from... Princess Bride, but I guess that's not. No, like... that's not my childhood either. Is it not? Nah, it's, I don't know. It's a little know. past it. Maybe, yeah. Yeah. But no, this is the greatest movie ever. I feel like this is taking a really long time to get to it. It's the greatest movie of all time. In War European. Paint is involved. War Paint is involved. I want to say it's Hook with Robin Golly, Williams. Holy, really? Do you do you do you remember Rufio with the face paint? There are horses. Oh, is it Braveheart? Yes! Okay. <laughs> Thank you. I probably just distorted will, your mic again. I will say Braveheart is one greatest of the... Greatest movie ever. It is one of the best written films Second ever. greatest movie Braveheart. ever, Patriot. Patriot's pretty good, too. You're a big Mel Gibson fan, huh? Third greatest movie <laughs> ever, Road Warrior. Okay. You never saw that one, did you? No, of course I did. It's the okay. first Mad Max. All right, Mad Max. Thank you. Yeah. All three Mel Gibson movies are, are, are in my top three. I believe it. What? Shortly after that, you've got yeah. Terminator 1. It's probably number four. Why one over two? Because that's oh, more, it's, it's the original. Yeah, and fair. then, I mean, and then Rocky. Rocky. Rocky the original Rocky. So basically just like every buff 80s hero is. Well, Braveheart wasn't 80s. No, that was that Or was Patriot. 90s. Patriot was, was 2000. I, I like American. You like American. American. American muscle boys. With, yeah. <laughs> I, I, no, wait a minute. I did not answer that correctly. That sound bite forever. I, those, those, no, but every single one of those movies. So I do remember I was. We, when did Rocky come out? Like for real? 79, I think, if I'm not mistaken. Let me look it up. Look that up real quick. Because. I just want to find 76. out. 76. 76. I flipped it. <laughs> trying to remember. Uh, I was trying to remember like when I first saw that. I don't know. We were at a Blockbuster video. I know those <laughs> don't exist anymore, and that might date me a little bit. But, but uh, no, I had Blockbuster. Did you go to Blockbuster? Totally. So my I was dad, a big fan. He, 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 we went to Blockbuster video, and he rented this movie named Rocky. I'm like, this is... Wow, I don't care about this. What is this? Boxing yeah. men. With Dude holding up voice. a flag on the cover. You know, kind of thing. And I could say, I knew that we would get a 99 cent discount. I said, Dad, I'll, I was always cutting deals with my parents, of course. which is just how you work, right? Yes. So I was the ultimate uh, negotiator as a child. You have to be. But anyway, I would say, all right, well, Dad, if you're going to get that, then I want to watch what I want to watch. Right. You know, I want to get me the back to the future movie. Like I want to rent that, you know, or something back to the future what is a great, movie. great movie. Not, not my top five. I wish it was. I, I'm it too is, shallow for that. Uh, it's not for me, <laughs> but I mean, clearly based on the five that I you, gave you, you're not wrong. Did um, you notice star Wars, which is like, I'm such a star Wars fan. Yeah. It didn't make my top five. I don't blame you. They've ruined the story. Wise, after the yeah, original trilogy. Yeah, I know the, the original trilogy is the only good, 
part, and really the first so, film is the best. I'm uh, gonna steer this back to music for a second. Okay, why not? So my so my dad Take it out gets of my uh, I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> gets this Rocky movie, mm-hmm. and it's Rocky one. Right. And I am telling you. We watched this movie, and my dad always liked boxing. Yes. And uh, for those Loved of you that don't know, my dad passed away not too long ago, and uh, that's been tough. But one of the things that my dad and I always had from me being a boy all the way up to when he was in his final year, yeah, he was always so proud of his fists, and he was a Golden Glove yep. boxer in the <laughs> Navy and all that and everything. And uh, so we'd even pretend jab in the, in the yeah. hospital bed and stuff. And... Um, and I've got this wonderful picture on my Instagram at Paul Scott Music. If you'd like to see it, if you scroll down a little bit. Um, shameless plug, but you will see him like this at a at a gym that I used to work at, mm-hmm. where he is at eighty years old or whatever, yeah. and punching maybe seventy eight, something like that. He was punching the punching bag. He's got his fists up ready to go. So even into his old age, he was still oh he was l- always ready to go, ready to go. There would be times I would go downstairs, him like walking around at three o'clock in the morning, like trying to make cereal or something. And he's watching HBO boxing. Well, that or like I just tap him on the shoulder to like kind of get him back in bed, and he turns around like, with okay, his fist up. It's a <laughs> reflex, son. I, <laughs> so I have to share two stories real quick, and then we'll, I promise we'll get back on track to the Rocky movie. Yes. Since you brought my dad up in boxing, because these are just funny stories. <laughs> and if you're into this podcast, hopefully you're watching this not just yes. to get valuable information, but to also have some fun. Tips. And pool tips, yeah. yes. <laughs> uh, I taught everyone how not to break at the beginning of this episode. And um, so one of my favorite stories about my dad, you, we, you had Duchess up here on the table earlier, right? Well, we had a cat named Zsa Zsa, and uh, this cat hated me. Green acres is the Yeah. <laughs> so th- this cat hated me. Like. Yeah. It was a legit hate. I never did anything wrong to it, right? I was a little kid, five years old or whatever. And you did something to that cat. Probably. But anyway, <laughs> anyway, I had this habit in the middle of the night, like many people do. I would get up in the middle of the night and I'd need a glass of water. So I'd go down to you the kitchen the and yeah, well that too. <laughs> and after I peed the bed, I would go down and get my get another glass of water so I could after. pee again. You know? And um I'd go down there and uh, this cat would hide, and it would it knew exactly when I was coming down the steps. Okay, and it would jump out and literally just bear hug and attack, and <laughs> try and kill me while I was trying to get my water, and I would get attacked every single <laughs> night, right? And so I, you know, I I would go down to get this water or whatever. So I knew that I would, I would scream every night and come down and, you know, my dad would come down and check on me. So my right. dad came down to check on me one night. I just wanted to be funny one night Yeah. and I knew he was coming uh, and I was okay. The cat didn't hurt me that time. Right. So I Not backed behind the wall a little bit and he came down and I was going to scare my dad. Right. Uh-huh. So I was, like, was going to be funny. So I was like, <laughs> Boo! and my dad goes, <laughs> and fortunately, because I was so small, right. I was too short to get hit, so he missed me. It just went over my head. But I've never heard a sound like that in my life, and I would have been like dead if yeah. he would have punched me. So there was that was the first time. Yeah, I, he had that reflex. He did. Like he would just he had, punch. It, if and his would. reflex was, "Hey, Dad, you got something on your shirt? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you got some mustard." <laughs> Yeah, he was just, and that was his his reflex. He did. You do not want to sneak up on him. No. And the other story that I have to tell is we were in, uh, we lived in Virginia, Mm -hmm. and there was a place called Kings Dominion, and this um, uh, park called uh, Paramount Kings Dominion, right? Mm -hmm. So, and they at at, uh, Halloween time they had the Scooby Doo cave, right? So went in there again, very little, like six or seven. I don't know. My dad was a little enough to where my dad had to hold me in his arms, uh-huh. and we're walking through because I was scared of the creepy cave that they decorated for Halloween. That's fair. I mean, so young. so yeah, but it's kids' cave, right? Yeah. It's Scooby Doo. It's it's cute, right? Scooby Doo. Not right? to you. Yeah. Not not then. And <laughs> so this this sixteen year old zit faced kid in in a and a costume comes up to my dad and he's like, and taps him on the shoulder. 
And my dad just turns. He doesn't. He just. He's like freaked out. I yeah. guess in there too, and just goes, "Wow!" and knocks this kid <laughs> flat out. <laughs> <laughs> just, uh, just knocked out. That scared me more. Oh, I bet because I'm like that time. Oh no, these scary things in this Scooby Cave must be real because my dad's trying oh, to that- fight <laughs> off the costume yeah. kid. I didn't know it was a kid in a costume. No, so all of a sudden now it's so like now this is a real it's nightmare. Real. <laughs> and then my but then my dad like helps up this monster. And Real starts apologizing for a young child. <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to, I don't understand. You knocked him out. I'm scared. I'm crying, but you're helping him. I know what's going on here. What are you doing? This is not making sense. <laughs> That's my boxing story. I'm going to go back to Rocky, Rocky for a second. Yes. Anyway, so my dad and I watched Rocky, <laughs> Rocky, and that was the first time I heard Eye of the Tiger. Not until Rocky 3 did you hear Eye of the Tiger. Which is why, really? yes, which is why you're not thinking of the 1976 Rocky. That's film. what it must be. That you're must thinking be the problem. Of the 1983 Rocky three. Really, it was <laughs> Rocky three. Yeah, the I, Eye of the Tiger. It yeah. might not have been. See, he knows this stuff. He's my. No, he's, but it is Eye of the Tiger. Well, anyway, on, on first movie III. I ever saw had Eye of the Tiger in it, whichever Rocky that is. So that was uh, it was 82. I was off by 82. A year. Okay, that makes a lot more sense yeah. because I was trying to figure out. Like where I was with him, and I'm yeah. like, this is kind of weird. I don't remember this being. What did I you say the other one 76. was? Seventy six. Yeah, definitely wasn't seventy six no. when this happened. Yeah. So okay, that makes a lot more yeah. sense. <laughs> so eighty two, which blockbuster probably would have been like eighty three, eighty four. No, it would have been like eighty six, probably. Okay, so whenever, yeah, it by the time there. it got out on twirly tape, <laughs> yeah. right? Um. So we're watching this thing, and uh. And I'm this I'm a little kid and I'm just like pumped. Like this is the greatest song I've ever that heard. That one gets you pumped. Because <laughs> it's attached to boxing. Yeah. And literally that song launched me into listening to all other oh, we got our friend back. Into <laughs> all other uh I guess hair band music you would sort of yes, call it, you that know. That's what I would call that. From that time. And I was like, and that that Good really got me Stallone. into just a blessing, dude. If it literally, if it wouldn't have been for Rocky, I probably would have never listened to Motley Crue and and um, uh, Rat and Poison and Bon Jovi Cinderella. And, and, and Cinderella. Yes, those <laughs> things were out and about, but it was literally the. Um, I can't survivor that uh, and that that got me into that music because it gave me a different take on it. While other people were hearing those songs on the radio and everything, I was into it because I associated it through film. Yeah, which is the best. So go ahead. Let me say (laughs) When, when you find a soundtrack to a movie that you like, it's like 10 times better. One, because it's mixing two mediums, which always strengthens a piece of art, in my opinion. And also strengthens the influence, because you're getting audio and visual at the same time. Right, and there's this emotional thing of identifying with a hero, walking through a journey with that hero, and then having a certain piece of music be tied along to that journey. Because all of a sudden, now, you're this kid at home on a couch, yes, but you went through a journey with this guy that you really admire and look up to and kind of sympathize with and want to be like. And at the end of the thing, he wins. He saves the day. It was the longest music video ever. Yes. You know, because it had a movie tied to it. And then he, and again, it's this whole champion motif, I guess. Right, and it it, has this emotional, like, thrust. Because I'm getting my brother with We Are The Champions. My dad's taking me to Rocky Eye of the Tiger. Like, I'm ready to go out and, like, take on the world kind of thing from it. Indeed. So interestingly enough, while those were my influences and while, uh, you know, I had some guitar influences from those things. Come on, Duchess. Help me out, girl. (laughs) Get in. Come on. Come on. Right here. (laughs) If she gets this in for me, it's amazing. I love it. (laughs) No, don't put that one in. What are you doing? Helping her owner, who she loves way more than you. <laughs> um, so, <laughs> she needs to be in every other game from now on. Yes. I can't take this. This is awesome. Um, she loves the pool balls. It's, it's great. So funny. 
So, um, I know we're not even like talking anymore. We're just like, this is the coolest cat in the world. The cat is cool. Um, <laughs> so while, while those influencers are there, yeah. um, screaming was never my strongest suit. No, you have a more pure playing. Voice. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and playing a million notes per second. Not super. Was, shitty. was, it was, was, yeah. Super, super, super shitty. Super shitty. Um, <laughs> wasn't where my guitar influences were leading right. at the time, but I loved all of that music. So yeah. what do you do? And that's, that's actually a commonality you and me have. What's not, that? not that I'm super proud of this, but I was so into hair bands for the longest time like that in middle school and early high school was like about the only music I listened to. Like, okay. Did you ever listen to like faster pussycat or like, I think it's called house of pain was one of oh, them. House of pain. Of course. Striper. It was oh, yeah. like the shitty Christian one that <laughs> was like hey, wearing watch your language on YouTube. <laughs> uh, it was, uh, no, in fact, uh, the bass actually player they were not Striper bad, and, really, and I uh, had a Craigslist exchange. That was That's really fun. weird, yeah. but it was it was fun to meet him that way. Um, Ooh, Warrant. I'm actually. F- oh, he lives here too. I'm well. He's dead now. Uh, Michael Sweet. That wasn't who I was referring to, but that's okay. That was the lead singer, though. I know, but that wasn't who I was. Anyway, go ahead. Okay, anyway. Oh, you probably, just like somebody in the band. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Um, Anyway, for some reason, I'm friends with his mom on Facebook. Oh, wow. I don't know when that happened. I think I just, like, thought it was, like, a fan page of his, like, when I was in middle school and just accidentally added her, but me and her are are friends on Facebook for some reason. Great. Proud of you. I just Did she make to, you cookies yet? or No. I just wanted to throw my weird <laughs> hairband story in here. What else hair, am I going to tell that? So <laughs> hairbands are amazing. And yeah. I really hope there's a resurgence of that because I spent a lot of time uh, trying to scream like them, trying to play like them, uh, getting halfway there. No pun intended. Oh, or half. Anyway. Um, been living on that. Anyway. Um but uh guy who played keyboards uh, with us in low cash actually played with poison oh, yes. got to meet Brett Michaels for the first time last year. What was that like? <laughs> Dude, it was like one of the coolest things. Um, I was a huge CC DeVille fan out of oh, poison. He's such a awesome yeah. dude. Yeah. And <laughs> I really, but Brett, the, the funny thing about meeting Brett Michaels that I didn't expect. And I was like, kid in a candy store i was like right oh god you're right Michael. that's so stupid <laughs> yet we're sharing the same stage yeah. um because he's actually there for a country festival that's fun which was fun and like, he, he gets down with that stuff he does though. he does and here's what's so cool about brett michaels that i didn't expect is regardless of the shows that he's had on tv um that have you know spun him in a different way or the antics that poison has done in the in the previous years he literally was one of the most down-to-earth people i've ever met that's awesome. and and like spent time talking to me it was weird i was like yeah. you're brett michaels why, why are you talking why are you still talking to me right now this is cool we're like having a real conversation you know and so i fangirled out a little bit for that's a moment awesome. there well, he but you. That's um cool. he did and it was just, he was like, brother, this is just like, we're all just out here trying to do this. This is music. Music isn't, you know, about anything, but just people doing what they do. Yeah. And, and, uh, that's a good, she literally just got one in for you and took it out. Thank goodness. Um, Aww. but he, a good try, poison became one of my favorite bands just because of their Look. album, you know, <laughs> shut up and say, ah, but then, um, but then meeting Brett, made me love that album even more oh, sure. 20 years later or yeah. whatever it was. And to go from being a kid loving them to being a semi-adult. Right. <laughs> I guess you could call me an adult. Three quarters. Um, three quarters of the way there. Um, just a brand new appreciation. And, and that was an influence. And again, yeah. that kind of comes back to those influences that just – Real good influences can last a lifetime. Totally. And when you get to meet an influence, oh, yeah. they become both an influence and an influencer. Well, in a way. I have a story about yeah, that that I think is contextual and works for this. So. You have a lot of big words. Uh, yes. <laughs> I talk about Talladega Nights. And you talk about contextual. That sounds like something that maybe we need to. Is contextual a naughty word? Oh my gosh. 
No. What, what would that even be confused with? You do know what contextual means, right? Please tell me you do. I've had some contextual situations in my life every now and then. That's consensual. Something just went in. Um, <laughs> the story is actually from one of your shows. Um, it was definitely contextual then. Yes. So <laughs> you, did, you did a show at 12th and Porter. Mm-hmm. And there was a... A celebrity there. Oh, yes. I think I do know who you're talking yes. about. Mr. Elliot Gould. Yes, sir. Yeah. And he was the coolest dude ever because he, like, took, like, 20 or 30 minutes to talk to me yeah. about, like, filmmaking because that's all that I cared about and still all that I cared Elliot about. Elliot Gould, if y'all don't know who that is, he's the the, the guy in the Oceans movie. He's probably yeah, his most he pop, commercially popular yeah for. but he was also in friends he's in a gazillion yeah he, he was ross's in, dad yeah, right yeah yeah he's in a gazillion and all that and he's yeah. a buddy of mine and yeah and he's like such a cool dude he, yeah he came out to the show that that i did there and, well, and uh, i loved the oceans movies yeah and i grew up watching those like with my dad like that was one of the first like pg-13 movies i could see so like I got to meet this guy that I had always watched, you know, pretty much as, as far as I can remember. And he was just awesome. Like, he was so cool. And then I got to see him talking to you, which was also very cool. Um, but it was so funny. Me and him just talked about, like, Christopher Nolan the whole time. That was good. That was a really good shot. That was a great shot. <laughs> Who's Christopher Nolan? He's the guy who directed Inception and the Batman movies movie. and oh, okay. Interstellar. He did the, his best is probably Memento, although my favorite is his student film from film school, which um, is basically just about a, a guy who follows people. It's called Following. It's in black and white. It's really good. Cool. Yeah, we're we're coming up on the end of this thing yeah, here. Yeah, we probably need to wrap it up for uh, and <laughs> and uh, we still are yet. This is probably the closest we've been. Go ahead. Probably the closest we've ever been to actually finishing a game of pool on a on a podcast yet. Um, I'm we did some, get really close. I'm somewhat tempted to like continue like talking. I hope people are enjoying this. I don't know. <laughs> no, it's it's a uh... there's a good table scratch for you. Thanks, but bud. Um, I, I think the cool that. thing is they've gotten to know some of my influences, some of your influences, um, maybe some unexpected ones. Um, I do want to throw out a couple other ones. I'm gonna let you grab that Thanks. ball up there. Um, just be, I don't have time to talk probably about all the reasons why they're an influence, but um, Tim McGraw and Keith Urban are a big reason why I moved to Nashville, along with Rascal Flats as well. Um, when when all of their uh, their music started to really emerge um tim was a little earlier but when rascal flats and keith urban really started in the early 2000s um that was like that that really turned an ear for me where i went yeah. huh like that dog ear right. thing i went what <laughs> country music can be like this it can yeah. have rock influence it can have pop influence yeah and, and that was just the time when that started to it was and that's thing. when i started to make the move to like i need to go check out what's yeah. going down in nashville yeah um got down here and like <clears throat> Uh, uh, mid 2000s around right. that range and um uh it was really an honor uh within the last two years i've gotten to tour with tim mcgraw yeah. keith urban yeah and rascal Flatts. and i and, I and was you came out with you and filmed all those, yeah. the, the low cash stuff for that yeah i got and there's something guys. really cool about when you meet the people who have influenced you before you've met really them really nice people too unbelievable yeah i mean how cool was it throwing the football with tim mcgraw backstage yeah. he knew who the heck i was yeah but he didn't care who the heck i was yeah and for me as a kid growing up listening to uh tim mcgraw in college and, yeah. and that sort of thing to be able to you know do a show with him it really just shows that music film yeah. art whatever it, it is it has the ability to bring people together yeah race gender Whatever it is, yeah. it, it brings it all together and just says, hey, let's just love some stuff. Let's totally. just appreciate each other for who they are. Yeah. And uh, let's influence through positivity. Yeah. And I think if I was to put a, a, you know, a, a cap on any of this here, I would right. just say all of my influences 
and probably most of yours and probably yeah. most of the people out there who are listening to this yeah. thing too are people I don't know many people who have influences that are like negative. And if they no, are, really, no. I would I would encourage people to get out and find a positive other, influence, yeah, influence. other influences <laughs> because it will change you. Yeah. And really a, a lot of my energy mm. and my dynamic and what I do and who I am comes yeah. from my champion. You know, we are yeah. the champions early on to Tim McGraw and Keith Irwin and, 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 and Gary the Vox from Rascal Flats uh, yeah. inviting me into – a, a hug circle yeah. to go on and say a prayer before a show yeah. was like, are you kidding me? Like yeah. these are real people. Totally. And I think that the magic is, is in their music, yeah. but the magic's also in who they are. Definitely. And I think that's, that's part of what, what we can, can all grow from. And I hope that people learn more how to, uh, you know, gravitate towards positive influences yeah. not just popular influences and that they would get more positivity in their life and i hope that you and i and what we do will bring more positive influence uh in this channel yeah. in this podcast and in the songs and the in the videos and the films that Indeed. we shoot and uh just don't take any of our pool tips. Yeah, They're definitely not the not pool. Good. This yeah. is a not positive no. influence for yeah. you, but uh, we, we would like to be a positive influence. Uh, if you've enjoyed today, like, subscribe, share, Indeed. all that good stuff. Um, uh, and uh, we're going to keep throwing these things at you yeah. and, and hope that people keep watching and enjoying and having fun, and we're just going to keep talking about great things on this channel. Enjoy. Paulcast. Peace out. Bye.